All right, North. Welcome back to the tactics board for a little focus on the offense today. All right, we're coming off a good road win against Portsmouth this weekend, 6-5 in a tough early game. Y'all did a great job getting yourself rested, hydrated, well-fed, and ready to go. Energy was high when we got out to the field, even though it was early. So I want to say well done to every single one of you. Uh, of course, there's always going to be things that we can improve and work on as we come out the backside of the game, but uh, it is important to you know, be proud of the win that you secured over there on, a, on an away field and realize now we're coming home for a two-game stand uh, back on the fields at North at Quonset. So looking forward to those with, uh, what, with you guys. <clears throat> so what we're going to do uh, is introduce a third offensive set. You guys are familiar um, with what is a couple different ones already. The original one that we taught to you was called the 2-3-1. So that was two middies up top, a midi in the, in the crease area with two wing attackmen and then one man at X, okay? That's your 2-3-1 motion offense. If you remember, the rules of the offense involved rotations with carries, right? Uh, as well as if a pass went between the two triangles, that would also uh, trigger a rotation, hopefully looking for that give and go potential as he cuts in the middle, okay? Um, so that was the basics of the 2-3-1 motion offense. Then we installed a different type of offense that we called open, uh, and we ran a play that we called Rambo out of, right? And so in the open set, uh, nobody was on the crease, and we were using this set to try to generate opposite and away cuts. If the ball uh, was top right, then, um, is that no, that's top left. If the ball is top left, then we were hoping to get this guy to make a cut and potentially get a feed into the middle there. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, based on this offense, we saw that the ball was hanging around on the outside a lot, and we weren't really running a whole lot of cuts, and we weren't really dodging either. So um, our offensive production out of this set was not as high as we'd like it to be. You guys are, are really good dodgers and cutters and feeders, and we want to start taking advantage of that and giving you some more opportunities to do that. So this will be a great offense that we may use if we get up and we're protecting a lead or we want to slow the game down. You may hear us go ahead and call open and have you guys set Rambo. If we do that, then we'll use that. And at that point, we're telling you it's okay to kind of you know slow down the game, keep the ball on the perimeter, and, and not press the attack. But what we'd like to look at going into this week is another motion offense, so similar to the 2-3-1, but our men are going to be positioned in different locations. Instead of having a midi player on the crease, we are actually going to invert the attack triangle and put an attackman on the crease. We will also move our two wing attackmen back behind, down low, right here. And then finally, these two middies will drop down a little bit. They form the three. And what we have now is a 1-3-2, Motion offense. The rules remain the same. You still have a midi triangle, one, two, three. You still have an attack triangle, one, two, three. The rules for the motion remain the same. If the ball is at uh, back behind, and we'll say that's bottom left behind, if this player decides to carry the ball across, all right, he can carry and it can initiate a rotation and we'll move our men in this way. If the ball is up top, and this midi carries back up to the top position. That will initiate a motion away from the ball carrier and send our guys in motion, okay? So those rules remain the same. The same thing goes if the ball is on the uh, kind of the right-hand side here and we pass to the other triangle, that still initiates a cut, okay? It still initiates a rotation of the passing triangle, okay? So if the middies pass it down, they will run a rotation. We, the reason we do that is when we pass the ball down, we want to run a cut for a quick look at a give and go, okay? If you'll notice, we now have another player on the crease. So that gives us a little bit of uh, something to think about. What is that crease attackman? Where should he position himself? And what job should he be doing uh, based on where the ball is? The one three two gives us the opportunity to take advantage of a, a concept that's called the two-man game. And what a two-man game is, is it's two of the players in the offense working together through basic fundamental building block type plays, whether that's a give and go or a pass down, pick down uh, opportunity to try to isolate one of those players in a position to score. So we'll start with talking about the middies and how we can use the 1-3-2 um, the 
to create some give and go, some really nice fast break opportunities. So what we're going to have as kind of the point midi, if you can imagine that, you know, we've just taken the ball and we've executed a clear or perhaps there was a, a cl uh, clock stoppage and we got a penalty and we're able to take the ball at the midline. Either way, our offense is settled. So if we have that situation and our players coming down from the midline, what we want, the, the player we want to be carrying the ball as a top midi is one of our fast speed dodgers, okay? Because this gives you an opportunity to isolate your midi defender and just go one-on-one, -on -one, okay? He's gonna call ball. You have the opportunity here with your wing middies pretty far spaced out. You know, you're gonna have a few more defenders in the middle here. You'll have a, a midi over here and probably an LSM over here. And then you're gonna have your defenders back here. Um, one of them is going to be on our crease man. Another one will be down here. And then the other man's going to be here. So we know that if they're playing defense the way we play defense, in this situation, they will probably be using a crease slide package or at least have a man on the crease. So this is where we start talking about what our crease attackman, how he needs to be thinking. Because you have two ways to position yourself. If you are in a position where um, another player is dodging to the goal, right? And when we talk about our, our top center midi, that's kind of what we want him to do in some instances. If he's got a head of steam and it looks like he can take this defender on a one-on-one -on -one dodge, then we want you to go ahead and do that, all right? You're going to hear us call gold. That just means alpha up and take the offense, all right? And it means a one-on-one. -on -one. Go ahead and make a, make a play for the goal. We really appreciate uh, the desire you guys have to pass the ball around, to be unselfish and play some good team ball and one more looks. But there will also be times where we need you to just alpha up and go ahead and drive the cage and try to bury a goal to get things going. So in this instance, if we start off and we've got our middies down low and they're kind of pulling our defenders down and they're playing and maybe in the hot position, which is where they should. They're not hot, actually, if they're running a crease slide package. They're going to be in these positions potentially to help out. But a lot of times, as we have seen, those defenders will get pulled out because they're going to stay with their men. That opens up a lot of dodging space in the middle. So the last guy that we need to worry about is this crease defenseman. So the attackman who is playing in the crease position, you are extremely important for manipulating the defense because they're not going to want to leave you alone. And if they do leave you alone, you become very dangerous as an opportunity to score. So your area of operation kind of exists in that stronghold area that we kind of talk about on the defensive side, but you're kind of living inside this space right here as the crease attackman. Um, you are manipulating your defender by moving around within that uh, crease zone, if you will. So if we're dodging from up top and you know that the ball carrier likes to dodge to his right, uh, so the ball's over here on his right side, he wants, he's a strong side dodger. We expect to see either a quick face dodge or a split dodge and go down to the, to the strong side you know he's going to want to come down this side. So you're going to manipulate your defender and kind of slide down away from where you know he wants to go. You slide down into the bottom corner of your zone. That's going to force the, the uh, hot slide and a crease slide package to make a decision. He's either going to stay with you, right, because he's concerned about a potential feed coming your way, or he's going to say, no, you know what, I have to be in a position to play. So let's go ahead and say that he stays with you. If he stays with you, the Dodger now has one man to beat and then a lot of space right here to get a nice hands-free step-down shot right into the cage. You've got a good look. The twos are going to be too far away to get to you. And if these left and right men have, have not spidered in, you're going to have a really, really good look at that shot. So that is, uh, you know, attack option one coming right out of the top. So now let's say that this crease defenseman recognizes that our crease attackman is trying to draw him away and says, I'm not going to do that. I know I'm the hot slide. I need a position to help. So he's going to stay right here. If this happens, now when the midi dodges down top, he's going to look and expect the slide to come. When the, when the slide comes, this is going to be, as he slides, this attackman can now creep up into the middle of the space. And it's a quick dump over here to this attackman and another good shot right on cage. Okay, so we're forcing the, de the defense to make decisions. Are you going to support via the slide or are you going to cover the attackman on the crease? The only way we gain an advantage by putting that attackman on the crease is if he intelligently manipulates his defender by moving from spot to, po from spot, to spot. So let's, let's say for instance, the ball is over here on the right side of the, uh, of the set. 
at this point, where should our crease attackman be? He needs to be moving all the time because he wants to drive his defender around. But if the ball is on this side and we know this man's a dodger, then we want to position ourselves on the opposite side because we want to open up that space. So our defender is going to come over in this direction. And in a, uh, in a crease slide package, this man would be the two. So if he's doing his job correctly, he'll be in a position to influence that crease uh, attackman. But if he does that, this dodger now again has the opportunity to beat one man and have a nice look at the cage right here. Because if, he, if these men creep up, guess what? Now your pass offs become very open. So if you come in and this guy's gonna crush you, I don't want you to take on a two or three person defensive scheme. We did that a lot. We have a bad habit of holding the ball far too long. And we really need to start looking up as offensive players and knowing where our outlets are going to be. In this instance, you can expect this low man, this low right attackman to be in a very good outlet position where if you get into trouble and this man comes up or this man slides and now you're doubled, just dump it off, okay? You dump it off to here and now we have the opportunity to do a few different things. He can either roll the cage and shoot because these guys are out of position or we can slow it down behind the cage and start working our attack. We're gonna talk about what these guys can do in a second. Let's go ahead and reset our minis. Okay, balls back up top. Defense is back reset. These guys are here and we have our defender in the crease. Okay, so let's talk about the two-man game options that the middies can use in the 1-3-2. All right, you guys have practiced all of these type of plays in kind of a building block drill approach and we're gonna keep doing that this week because these plays are very, very simple. There's not a lot of motion or steps to them. They simply require accurate passing and catching. That's all it takes. If you can accurately pass and catch, you will generate goals out of these simple two-man games. All right, so up top, we have our on-ball defender. We have our midi who's driving down. He decides the middle looks pretty clobbered right now. Maybe our crease attackman is a little bit slow to move and manipulate, or maybe uh, the defense is playing strong and just staying right in the middle of the zone. He recognizes, okay, that's not gonna be a good call. So the ball's in his strong side on the right side. And what he's going to do is we're gonna stay wide right here. And the ball is up top. We know again that he's going to go. So if, if he passes off and we're going to initiate a give and go uh, scoring opportunity in this instance, when he passes off this direction, the crease attackman again needs to manipulate his defender by pulling over into this bottom corner. Okay. So hopefully that defender goes with him because he doesn't want to lose his man. Again, if he does lose his man, if he stays here, we get all sorts of options with this crease attackman. So for the crease attackman, don't feel like just because you're manipulating or going away from the ball that you're taking yourself out of scoring position, you are absolutely manipulating that defense and increasing our opportunities to score because he either has to stay with you to honor the threat of you being in the crease and on the crease, or he'll decide that he's not. He's more concerned about dodging, and now you have a lot of space to work, catch a feed, and uh, make a nice quick finish on the crease. So in this instance, we'll say he does stay with you. He wants to dissuade uh, the quick feed to you, but we know that he's passed down and he's going to cut and immediately right here. So let's talk about the cut. What I just did was pass in front of my defender. You don't want to do that, right? Because just like all of us, right? Whether you're 44 like me or 11 like some of you, the instinct when a man passes the ball oftentimes, is to look where he passed. So he passes and this man typically will look at that ball. What I want our cutters to start doing is taking advantage of the man's backside, okay? So if, we, if he passes down to this wing midi, what I wanna see is a hard cut away so you get behind him and then cutting in, okay? So it's kind of a V cut. It's not really a V, I don't know, you call it check mark or something like that. But I want you to pass, cut hard away, and then cut this way. That's gonna spin him around. If he sees you, he's gonna flip around this way and you're already gonna be cutting this direction. So this needs to be a quick catch roll up to get hands free from this man and then a feed right here. And now you're operating with the finish, okay? The key to a give and go is accurate passing and the knowledge that as soon as I catch it, I'm rolling hands free and passing it right back. It has to be a bang, bang play. 
And the key to this offense is understanding that the majority of your scoring opportunities, if they're not being driven by a dodging attackman, whether that's um, this guy dodging from up top or anyone else dodging from the wing, if the ball is passed, you must understand you're passing it with a purpose. It's not just to move the ball around or to stall things out. You are passing to score. In that instance, we're talking about you're going to pass down. He's going to catch hard cut in. Then this way, he rolls up right back to you. That should be a quick finish right there to the cage. Okay, if the goalie saves it, so be it. We transition to a ride and we get going. But one way we're going to increase our offensive production is by taking more shots. Right now, we are holding the ball on the perimeter far too long. We're holding the ball far too long in one person's stick. Um, and we're inviting uh, people to chase us down, dispossess the ball. And we are causing a lot of turnovers because we're simply not moving the ball or pressing the attack. So this offense will give us some opportunities to really work some two-man games and try to press that attack and get some more points on the board. Okay, so that is the give and go. You can go either way, all right? If you're a righty, maybe you want to dump down that way because he's already there. That pass, again, cut in right here. That ball needs to be kind of going towards his back, okay? This is tricky because it's difficult as a righty to catch that ball in front of you. You got to invert your stick. You're not really in a good position passing man you want to put it in his stick because he should already be loaded the sticks trailing over his right shoulder he should catch it right in that stick and already have a nice wind up ready to go the other thing to think about here is if we decide to pass down to our left pass cut in and go now your stick is in a natural right side position where the face is already facing this man as he rolls up and dumps it back into you again this attackman should have drawn his defender over here so you have some space now as that ball comes flying back at you you're going to catch it in front of your body at this point and have to come back with that momentum and finish going towards the cage okay so think about that and we're going to run give and go drills today or you know this week at practice so you guys will get a lot of reps looking at the, gig, the give and goes okay so the next concept that we can run two-man game out of the middies uh is the pass down, pick down, okay? So this play is a play that's designed to allow the wing middies to roll off a pick and take a shot, okay? So again, if the top side middie decides that he's going to initiate a pass down or a pick down, this is something where as you come down the field, okay, you should be, you should be uh, motioning or indicating you want to look at a pick. And what we can do is rather than tapping the top of our helmet, which everybody knows means pick, all right, I want us to start thinking about uh, perhaps a little bit of a, uh, a code word. And I think pistol is probably a, a, decent, a decent initiating word. So, you know, anything that starts with P so we can remember that it, that it is a, uh, a pick. So if we come down, Mitty, if you're looking and you want to do a pass down, pick down, all right, look over at your man and yell, pistol, pistol. If you say that, eventually the other team's going to figure out that means pick. But initially they won't know, and it's a lot less uh, obvious than just tapping the top of our helmet. So we come down, we say, pistol, pistol. At that point, we pass down. Now follow your pass. This man should rotate because we're, we're shifting things around a little bit. So I want you to float up a little bit. The attackman should be rotating over in this direction or potentially over here, but doing something probably down low to draw his defender. At this point, you're going to come down and you're going to set your pick. This should be the on-ball guy. He's playing hard on-ball defense. You're going to stop your movement right here, stand like a statue, and hold your stick uh, tight against your chest, straight up and down. So we don't get called for moving picks. It is important that you understand that to set a pick, you must be absolutely stationary. You cannot come into this defender with any type of movement. So you are coming down and setting yourself up as an obstacle for this attackman then to basically shed his defender, okay? So as he comes this way, this man is gonna hit this pick, and then you get to roll, okay? You get to roll over the top and take a shot, you know, charge the middle and take a shot. Now, is it likely that this defender will not go with this man after he starts moving? No, of course not, it's, it's not likely, he's probably gonna go. So if the ball comes down from the top, passes down, we begin to move, this man's going to come with him and that's okay. You need to sprint down, set your pick, this guy's going to come. At this point, you're protecting the ball, you're shedding and there's gonna be a decision to make right here. 
the defenders are going to have to make two decisions. They're either going to switch their defense, okay, because this is this man here, but this guy's in a better position. So what may happen is you may hear switch, switch, switch. And once that happens, when he rolls, this guy's going to pick him up. You still already have a step on him and you're protecting the ball on the right-hand side. You can just roll right around him and still get a decent shot. There's no hot slide unless he's already on his way. And if he is, then you need to dump the ball out, okay? Again, do not press a bad situation inside the crease zone because we're coughing the ball up too much. Bounce it back out and we'll reset. Um, much better to reset and try another attack than to risk turning the ball over, okay? We have far too many turnovers. We're gonna try to reduce that by making smarter decisions on the attack. Rather than pressing double and triple teams, we will push the ball out, settle, rotate the ball to spin the defense, and then take another look at another play, okay? So in this instance, the another thing that can happen, if this is the ball carrier and this is our picker, uh, he's here, this guy came with his man. What can happen here is the defense can decide to double. And defenders, if you're watching this video, pay attention because we'll wanna do some of this as guys start sending picks against us. This ball carrier comes across the top of the ball. Both defenders, you will you may hear a call that says, stay left, stay right. All right, this man who's coming in with here, this is the on-ball defender. He's gonna tell his man, stay left, okay? He's gonna stay left, he's gonna stay right. And they're both gonna just come over and try to clobber this guy by doubling him. Once the man is past the picker, picker, you need to pop out, okay? Because now you are a simple dump down right here, and now you get to charge and take a shot while both defenders are out of position. So we will train this, we will teach this in practice, and you're gonna deal with both situations, both where there is a switch and the, uh, the defender that was not being picked but was brought into the play by the picking man will switch and cover the ball. That's okay, you will have a step on him and be able to roll over the top. And we will train where uh, they don't switch and the LSM stays with. These guys end up you know, kind of getting caught up a little bit, but the LSM stays and you end up in this situation, or you can end up in a double situation. And if you get doubled with the ball, I want you to spin out of the problem. Okay, you've got the ball right here. They double you. You should be wheeling out just like our spin, our spin it passing, or swing it passing rather, wheel out right here and look for the man who's popped off that pick, dump it down and continue the attack. Okay, so that are, those are our two main offensive two-man games that we will use on either side. All right, the give and go and the pass down, pick down. Those are the two we're gonna talk about. Those are the two that we'll practice uh, this week in practice. All right, so now let's reset this up and we're gonna take a look at what the attack is doing now. Okay, we've talked about how the crease attackman needs to be manipulating his defender, being very savvy as to where the ball is on the field and positioning it himself in a way that draws that crease attacker, a crease defenseman, excuse me, away from the play and opens up dodging space. Uh, so when this guy decides to dodge either this way or dodge up top, beat his LSM and, and you know dive towards the crease, he's got time and room to take a shot before that hot slide gets to him. Okay, we're trying to get shots off before the slide uh, gets to us. And in this instance, with this man being up here, you're gonna have a little bit of time. Once you beat your man, you gotta use speed, get into the cage, get that stick up, and rip a shot into that cage to see if you can get in the back of the net. Okay, so that's what he's doing when he's helping the middies, okay? The same, ago, the same applies for the attack triangle, okay? If the ball is down here, bottom right, and the attackman is in this position, if we have a solid dodger uh, on the back, and these two guys kind of work together, okay? We're gonna look at that in a minute. But they have a bit of a two-man game going between themselves, using a lot of picks uh, behind the cage to open up opportunities to roll the cage and, and roll the crease and, and score. So the other thing that happens in the attack triangle is that they can be, if we have good feeders back here, then this man on the crease becomes very, very dangerous because um, if we have dodgers and feeders in the back, which we will with our attackmen, then we have the opportunity to have two different ways to score. So in this instance, let's talk about the crease attackman first. So in this instance, this man here is being played on ball by him. This is the on-ball defender. He's back here. He passes over this direction. Okay, this is now your on-ball defender. He spiders back in just like we would expect. At this point, again, pistol, pistol, when he passes, now he's going to come right here, right behind the crease and set a pick, Okay. This defender may or may not come up and, and play you. We'll see. You don't have the ball. Odds are good he's going to stay right about here. The ball comes over this direction. The idea is to shed your defenseman against that pick. And once that happens, depending on where this guy is, you're looking to roll over. But if you end up with hard defense right here, guess who is wide open right here? The crease attackman. This guy is going to be on you. But if you start here, 
when the ball starts and you kind of mirror the ball, right? So if you start right here and the defender's playing you ball side, he's playing ball side leverage, you come over this direction, you shed your man, the new man picks you up or they double. If they double, you probably need to spin out and look for this man to pop out, right? Because if they both go with you, he's gonna be totally available. And if they both go with you, guess what else he's gonna be? He's going, this is, this is the trap of this type of defense. When you have two behind that are very savvy in what they're doing, when this ball comes back, he has an open drive to the cage. This attackman now needs to float over in this direction because this is the only defenseman who has any chance to do anything about this play. So as you drive the cage, this guy has to decide, do I leave the crease attackman open for a feed and a goal and slide on this dodger because there's no one else to do it? Or do I stay right here and now you're one-on-one -on -one to the goalie? Okay, so if these guys double behind the cage, the... The picking player who pops out is going to be wide open with a lot of uh, opportunity to score either by driving the crease or by feeding the creaseman who will be left because this man will slide uh, to defend the dodge. All right. A lot going on here. I know I'm talking fast, but the important thing to understand and to recognize is that the 1-3-2 gives our uh, offense a lot of different opportunities to transition things and move into scoring. But the only way that you turn these opportunities into goals is by understanding the role of each person. So the most important person in this offense in many ways is the crease attackman. You must be moving and you must be essentially mirroring where the ball is, playing opposite of the ball in many cases to open up the dodging lane. But then understanding that there will be there will come times where the dodging lane isn't the primary the primary aspect here, and instead you're trying to manipulate for a feed. So if we decide that we're not going to dodge, we're just going to hang out back here. We ba basically have two quarterbacks on the back side of the defense, and what I like to see here is now we can make these defenders choose. And if we overload one side, if this guy carries and both our attackmen are now over in this area, that is going to require both defenders to kind of come over here and be in a position to do something about it. One guy's not going to play both of them. So once that happens, we can kind of start manipulating a lot of things. And you guys understand that we need to play to space. So at that point, this midi can actually float down. Once he does that, this, this defender who is still here, if we can bang the ball quickly here, this man floats and a quick pass right here. Again, we have another good opportunity, but it is all contingent on this attackman reading what's happening on the rest of the field and then playing a smart positional game to open up opportunity for himself. We've put everybody back where we're at. At this point, we'll say the ball is back here, bottom left. If we're going to just hang out a little bit and wait for something to, uh, for, to allow, to, to develop, we have the opportunity here by doing this to do some different things. This man doesn't always have to stay here. If we decide we're just gonna play some quarterback behind the cage and he comes over here, this man can now come onto the crease as well. Now they've got trouble, right? Now they've got to bring up here. The crease is getting very clobbered and congested, but you have two opportunities for defensemen who can now run cuts, opposite cuts, and some of the traditional things that you'll see is they'll run scissor cuts. And a scissor cut is simply where they cross sides. So as this man's back here with the ball and he's looking to feed somebody, these guys up here can start up high, kind of drawing their defenders here, and then they do a scissor cut where this man's gonna cross this way, this man's gonna cross this way. And when that happens, the defense is gonna get a little mixed up in the middle, and you may have a quick opportunity as this defender may get hung up on the cage or he's playing on ball. Either way, we're looking for cuts in the crease, either way to kind of play ball there. All right, that's one change here. And what you have right now is a 1-4-1 one, one offense, okay? We just transitioned, you didn't even recognize it. But this is something that we don't have to stay in, but if we decide we wanna play with it, then we can try it and see what happens. Typically in our games, the crease is gonna become very, very congested. So we may not wanna put another guy here. We may wanna keep him out here and have you guys kind of run your two-man game uh, behind. Recognizing that, you know, uh, guys like Xander, very smart at setting picks, very good at setting picks, and again, Odds are good, only the only the on-ball defender is gonna going, is going to go behind. So at this point, if you pass here, this man will approach, at least he should, because he's the on-ball defender. We're gonna come down, we call it pistol, we're gonna set a pick. This man is going to maybe float up, because again, he's not gonna be, you're not on ball anymore. He's gonna come over, you're gonna shed that defender, and now the hope here is that you can either roll, but recognize that this defender's still here, so you may actually need to just, he's gonna pop off, you come here, dump it back, now you get to roll. Because you, you, you jam up the defenders on that pick. But it only works if the picking player moves out of the pick. Once the pick has happened, we go back here and look at this. 
Okay, you have the ball. This man is here. You've set your pick right behind. Once you pass the picking man, once he passes and you hang that guy up, at that point, the picker has to pop out. Pop out right here because whether or not this guy comes or not, the odds are very good he's not going to be with you because there's a dangerous dodger here and he shouldn't just let you go one-on-one. -on -one. If he does, go ahead and take it to the cage. Uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one to the cage, go ahead, give it a shot. Um, or look for a feed as you roll around. If you get in high pressure defense, maybe you can get a quick feed and goal. But if they double, like oftentimes they will, now just a quick dump off back, roll the cage, shot. Okay, but the two of you working that picking game behind is very, very dangerous and difficult to defend. And as long as the picking player is popping out after the pick goes past, you open up some very nice uh, dump pass and additional roll shot opportunities. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking. The key here is that this offense, the one three two, which we're going to call black, all right, because our colors are black and gold. So if you hear call black, you know, set black, set black, that's going to be the one three two uh, motion offense. The rules are the same as the two three one. Okay, the two three one, which we'll call gold. Well, we can't call it gold because that was uh, already being used, but we'll come up with a name for that one. We'll tell you if you're in a two three one or standard offense. But for the one three two, which we're going to, which we will call black, the rules are the same. The triangles move if you carry the ball. If you pass between the two triangles, rotate the passing triangle. But then the rest of the offense is predicated on two-man games, both the give-and-go, particularly from up top, although you can certainly run give-and-goes down behind as well, right? Because if you pass between the triangles, there's already a give-and-go there. If you pass up to this midi, you pass, you need to cut the cage, okay? If this guy's on you, if he's playing on ball, on ball, Again, the cut off the ball. You're here, you're here, you're here. This man's looking good. If you go, this is an automatic cut. Go and try to try to hit you on the, on the uh, cut. Every time you pass the ball, there should be something happening unless you are passing to another player within your triangle. But even that being said, every pass is an opportunity for a give and go. You have to start thinking of that way, that you are passing to score. When you pass that ball, you're not just getting rid of the ball so you can take a break. You are passing the ball to move the defense and open up a scoring opportunity. And if you are running your cuts in a very intelligent manner, for instance, if we're coming up, he's on ball, he's got the ball in his right hand, he looks over here, okay, he's gonna go ahead and initiate. What If you're not gonna dodge, then again, I want you guys to be thinking at least give and go on almost every pass. Because if you're not thinking that way, now there's times you're going to settle and just move it, right? If we call yellow, we don't want you to press, okay? We call yellow, go ahead and move it around, slow it down a little bit, slow it down a little bit, burn some of the clock, okay? Use smart game management. But then if you hear us call green, all right, it's time to go. And at that point, your instinct should be give and goes. So at this point, he's playing on ball. He passes down. I want to see a cut away from the pass and then quickly back into this direction. You should be rolling up to receive that pass and then shooting it. We do the swing at passing for a reason. It involves moving away from your defender to receive the pass, but you need to also be thinking about once I receive that pass, what am I gonna do with it? And I'm telling you right now, in black offense, we wanna see you putting it right back into the hands of the man who threw it to you, okay? Because we should be looking at give and goes as the primary uh, building block of this defense, or of this offense rather, and the secondary uh, building block being the pass down, pick down, where we're gonna call pistol, pistol, throws down, Runs down with his guy, sets a pick right here for this man to shed his defender right here, and they're going to have to make a decision. Do I double, do I switch, or do I stay and hold? Either way, you have options. As soon as the man with the ball passes the pick, I need the pick to pop out in a position to receive the ball in a dangerous position. If they double, just pass it right back. If they double, this man has no defender. You have to recognize that. If they double, then, the, then your picker is wide open. So you need to think that way as an offensive player. You're trying to manipulate the defense. You want them to double you because if they double you, you the picker is now wide open and has a lot of room to operate. Okay, so think that way. Passing to score, all right? Picking to get open and moving, particularly that crease attackman, or yeah, that crease attackman, moving around to manipulate the crease defenseman that they're going to put on you. Now, will they run a crease slide package? Maybe. Will they run something similar to stronghold where this man is just a crease lock? Maybe, we'll have to identify that. Once we identify what they're doing, it allows us to know how else we can manip manipulate the offense. But a lot to process there on this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long, but bottom line, black, the one, three, two, is built upon give and goes and pass down pick downs. And then the two man game back behind with picks, 
rolls, pops, and uh, feeds to the crease. These three attackmen, you guys are one unit working back there. All right, I visualize we're basically looking at uh, Xander and Riley or Xander and Sam. You guys can work that pick that pick game back there very, very well. And Owen, you're my little crease ninja. You need to be in here moving around, uh, constantly moving, keeping this guy wondering, what the heck is this guy doing? If you have him distracted, guess what? If he's the hot slide, he's not going to get there. All right, so keep make his job difficult by moving around a lot in that crease zone. And... Uh, we're going to have some good good effects with this offense. So, all right, great uh, great job this weekend. Good job watching this video. Very similar to the Defensive Honor um, Study Award. The same thing exists for the black offense, all right? If you're looking to earn an honor zap for your helmet, you can do that through Offensive Study by watching this video and then talking to either Coach John or myself, talking me through the fundamentals of the one three two black offense. What are the primary building blocks of the offense? I've already told you. It is the give and go. I want you to be telling me what does that cut look like, all right? If he's going to pass this direction, where should he cut? Remember, hard cut away and behind this defender and then this direction to receive it. You do that, you're going to beat your man and you're going to be in a position to do some work. And if this attackman has drawn the ball down here because when he sees the ball go in this direction, he should go opposite side of where the ball is to open up some space. Okay, so remember, that's the cut. Cut away and then hard towards and then the pass down, pick down, which we've already talked about. Those are the two building blocks. You show me how that works, and you talk to me about the setup as well as the behind pick game and what the crease attackman's job is, and you guys will earn yourself uh, offensive study on our helmet zap. All right, well done. Looking forward to practice this week. Go North.